me and Anthony Davis walk out. I'm holding like, at the sneakers are there, and uh, and they go, "All right, Sal, you could give the kid the sneakers, or you could tell him he doesn't get them." And I stuttered, I stuttered, and everything. But I I told the kid, he, he, I, I changed my mind. You don't get the sneakers. And then the parents were like, "What?" And they just started like yelling. Because they 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 genuinely were like, <laughs> started booing and everything. And I just took the sneakers and I literally just like I literally like just w- w- beelined out of the gym. Yeah, because that one. And then Andy Davis took his shoes off and gave it to the kid. It's like comedy. You know, comedians we make fun of institutions, but comedy needs to be that popular in order to satirize it. Thing right. that's being said. That's like I yeah, mean, some good. people might not care, but like it, that it is like. The thing that becomes that satirizing it then becomes the mainstream, which is what happened to Tim and Eric and stuff. Well, yeah. But like, he was the original guy that was doing like kind of what's on the internet right now, a little bit, where it's like, hey, let's have like people that are smarter, like, hey, let's get a white supremacist and a fucking black guy <laughs> to like argue or whatever. Yeah. He would just videotape bums fighting each other. He's taking advantage of these mentally ill people and profiting off of them. You know, all I gotta say to anybody who said that what we were saying was fucked up, what y'all gonna do? What y'all gonna do now? <laughs> what y'all gonna do now? Okay. Uh, we just going to insert the Aquafina drop. <laughs> okay. Don't ever say we're not brilliant ever. One thing about this podcast, the past <laughs> decade, even though this is the first episode, we predicted a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. And idiot yeah. listeners, mm. best internet detectives in the world. Thank you very and much. <laughs> Yo, it feels that good was to be vindicated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, it man, really it ain't yeah. a stereotype if it's true. White people have been saying this for years. Come to- <laughs> what are you wearing? What? <laughs> wait, 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> what y'all going with? What, what, you know, what y'all going to do now? Come on now. Speaking- Speaking of goddamn uh, racism, white people getting what racism. they deserve. Speaking of white people getting what they deserve. You have to go outside. <laughs> you have to go outside if you want to jerk off. In the woods? Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be the woods. It can be the fields, but you have to jerk off. You have to bring a jerk blanket. No. This is a tour bus staple. You got to bring a little blanket. You lay down on the ground. You burrito yourself in the blanket. You jerk off in it. Okay. On the ground? I mean, it's in I'll, your blood. I'll masturbate like a ninja. I got to tell you, the most embarrassing thing about learning to jerk off in the in the bathroom was my dad. Like, what an asshole. We're at dinner, and I had just gone through, you know, really learning about how to do it. And we're at dinner, and, like, it's quiet, and my dad has, like, shoveling peas in his mouth. It gave me the worst panic on earth, dude. Wow. And after that moment, I didn't jerk off for, like, a day. (laughs) (laughs) No, it it fucked me up, dude. Well, like, when it comes to that, like, if if you said, I'll give you a million dollars, here's a Victoria's Secret. Right. You might as well just give me the Bible because I'm not going to be able to do it. Not going to be able to do it. What, did you play sports when you were a kid? I was I was in football. Yeah. I played wait, football. Wait, wait, let me guess. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. You know. How, how tall are you right now? You're 6'3"? Six, 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 yeah, 6'2", six, two. Six, six, yeah. six. So I would say back then you probably, uh, you're on defense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're a corner? You play corner? I, I played corner at one point. Yes, I did. Okay. But most of the time I was... Uh, I was either a guard. I was I was a guard. Okay. Most common hypothesis there is that feet are a safe, non-penetrative, non-contagious thing to sexualize, so our brains latch onto them. That sounds like so, they're just completely speculating because who knows? Like when there was a syphilis outbreak in the 1800s, was there a dude keeping track? Yeah, Al Capone of, wasn't of, banging feet of how horny people were for syphilis. feet. We don't yeah. make, that's but, one that's what they said. I like never that. know what somebody's reason, fetish is. That's the thing. Mom I guess what I'm trying to say is like back in the day, we were all monkeys hypothetically. Okay. And then one monkey was born with feet. Okay. <laughs> and then someone like me was like, that is, that's, that's Victoria's Secret. Like, that's the most fire shit. Boom. That monkey can jump across all the branches. Look Boom. how good their feet are. Boom. I want my, I want my baby monkeys to be able to climb like that. I think the genius of, of UFC, obviously it has top athletes now, but they really are curating the identities of fighters in a way that like boxing completely messed up it's clear that dana came from boxing and these guys came from boxing they're like what's wrong with this and i do understand that there are people that like push back and there are people that are upset about the structure of it but at the same time if you're willing to do what you're doing what izzy's doing what connor did you can make unbelievable amounts of money and have unbelievable success there's a there is a an organization dedicated to making you look amazing as far as f- physically uh, yeah um no you, you're fucking you're stuck you, you're de- you're definitely so i'll weigh in at 136 yeah. 135 next fight championship weight yeah um i'll be up to 158 that night Fun. wow yeah, yeah wow yeah so 13 pounds comes on 
Yeah. Well, I, I'll be, or no, 20. 23. 23. Oh, 50. 136 be, to 135 to 158. 23 that, that pounds that in one day. How the fuck is that? From, even it, you're just, it's just water, food. Oh, yeah, a lot of hydrogen, a lot of water. Lots of liquids uh, and carbs and eating good. Um, but the day, the actual time, you know, then you shit a couple times and then you, you know, that the day I walk into the cage around 154, 153. Wow. So, but that night you're at a big, yeah, yeah. How much Whoa. is a lot of guys? That's normal. I would say that's probably normal. But I, for, for guys. yeah, I've heard, I've heard, sorry, I've heard about this, but like, and I'm trying to understand, is it simply just your body bloating because it's been so deprived with water? At this point, you probably have an alcohol or a drug problem and you need, you need help. <laughs> that's really the only thing that's going to save you. Uh, having a drug problem or an alcohol problem and you need to seek help. Other than that, Superman, they going to fry your ass. Since they end up pulling it off, suspending him for a whole season, oh no, his behavior is going to change. Because these, these two little incidents done cost you 50 million, damn near, and then another 50 something. Oh, no, nah, yeah, oh, that, oh, that changed your behavior. The owner, if the owner really wants to, like, like, if he doesn't think you're in control of what you're doing, what I'm going to do is I'm like, all right, personally, as an organization, we're going to suspend you for a year. We're going to suspend you for a year. That right there changed your behavior. I never understood why comedians would use it just to put jokes out there. It's like, yeah. why are you, why are you wasting your material? Right yeah, here? it was back in the day. There was a guy named, uh, fuck, he was the first dude. You have to understand, like, comedians are motivated by selling tickets to their shows. That's the only thing. Like, whatever we will do whatever will sell tickets to the shows. So uh, there was a guy, I'm forgetting his name, John. Uh, it's not Mulaney. It's uh, another dude who, who who got incredibly popular on Twitter. And Is it Rob Delaney? Rob Delaney. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Rob Delaney got so popular on Twitter, and then he started selling out shows. Yeah, and I think a lot of comics were like. So, Arian, if you're if you're unfamiliar, Snapchat has added an AI uh, robot that you can talk to on your on your Snapchat app, and uh, it's giving some interesting answers. So, one guy was like, <clears throat> "Do you know where I am?" And it was like, "No, uh, I I don't have your location." Then he said, "Where is a McDonald's near me?" And the nearest McDonald's is right here. A quarter of a mile away from you or whatever. I don't want a radical leftist AI to know my location, but that's um, just me. I do. <laughs> I do. Uh, if you say straight people are awesome, it says, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I think it's important to recognize that every person you need. Why is Disney doing that? Because you're not a big, like, conspiracy, quote unquote, guy, right? Like, well, I mean, they said that sounds like They said it out loud, well, so that's you, not a conspiracy. What's an, give right. us an example but of like, something why? Disney's done. So recently, okay. So the, their last couple of movies have had explicit gay relationships in the movies. Like right? and they directed it, the Buzz Lightyear, well, the Lightyear film, and uh, Strange World. Okay, also also had one. Um, they've um, in in a lot of their programming, they they've started to inject some more of of that type of of messaging with regard to gender fluidity and um, they, they they did this some of the remakes also, like the Beauty and the Beast remake. Suddenly, Lefou was gay. Right. That's the thing, and, and maybe maybe Nate felt uh, like he was in danger or something. But I reached out to the guy, and I was like, "This is fucked up." Like it was actually hard to watch, um, and I felt bad for him. And he, and he looks like me. We got to protect our kind, and so I offered to to fund the lawsuit against Nate Diaz. And so I, I connected him with uh, some some legal counsel, and I think he'll probably be walking away with a pretty healthy check from. Wait, Nate. so you're so that's so why we'll do the interview. So you're paying for his lawyers I offered to and then it turns out the legal team we connected him with is taking the case pro bono because it I mean I I would assume they think it's a takeaway like well, there isn't really much to say about no, it. a professional MMA fighter choked out a civilian with relatively zero com no combat no, experience and I think that this is where <coughs> God and hope kind of sync up for me because if you just believe that at the end of your life it's lights out your consciousness is done and your journey uh, is at the end, it can be pretty hopeless. Yeah. You combine that with climate change and how things might look for our great, great grandkids on this planet. Look at the wet, extreme weather events that are happening now. How, you know, what's that going to look like 50, 100, 150 years from now? Um, and this mental health epidemic, the kind of partisan politics and the and the, the toxicity of Washington, D.C. and and stuff with Russia and with China, like it's it's a very hopeless world. So part hope can be a, a weapon utilized to make the world. My daughters rediscovered the office 
yeah. through TikTok. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're like, yo, what is this? And I was like, Oh, because they're seeing the funny little they're clips. They're just seeing the funny little clips. They started there, yeah. And, and they're like, what is this? I go, it's a gateway drug. But 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 then to get on a show that has a, a, a cultural resonance and that people, it, it, it profoundly moves them and they talk about how much joy it's brought them and how it's uplifted their lives and brought people together. And they're so grateful that the show exists. Like I am so profoundly lucky to have been just in the right place at the right time. I was just starting to heat up as an actor right when I got cast in this amazing showrunner, Greg Daniels and Steve Carell, one of the great American comedy actors of all time, of all time. like leading the show. And because of the uh, use of petrochemical products, the increase of phthalates into the human body from contamination mm -hmm. has caused people's taints to shrink, balls to shrink, dicks to shrink, sperm counts to drop, and miscarriages to go up. And they think that if you think about that, like that is like causing gender to just kind of compress and to become like more ambiguous. And in the future, if that continues to happen, what what does that mean? Like, what do we become genderless? And then what do we do to try to keep the human race alive? Well, we may we may revert to genetic engineering, like some sort of a genet, like some sort of a you know, medical, technological intervention. So we breed from like splicing genes. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's scary, but it's just one of those things where people like start debating whether or not you should have that money. You know? and there's a lot of angry, jealous comedians, unfortunately. Like a lot of comedians are narcissists and a lot of them are very self-centered and egomaniacs. Yeah. That's what my take on it. Oh. Help everybody. Yeah. And it's good also for the art form, which is good for you. Like when other people are killing it, it's good for you. You just can't, you can't have that that miserly way of thinking that some people have. Pressure, like, is it like you wake up in the morning? You're like, what is? Is it like a? What's going to be in this box today? Of uh, they're, they're scared of the. But ultimately, you learn from those. So like, no, because like even the regrets, the bad things or the stupid things, you learn not to do bad things or stupid things. You know, those all those things are beneficial in some way if you can get through them. You know, you know, if you like did something that that resulted in someone's death or some something horrible like that, yeah, it'd be a terrible regret. But I've been very fortunate that that hasn't happened. But the dumb shit that I've done or the bad mistakes that I've made, they've taught me. You know, you learn. Like that's why failure is so important. Like failing and fucking up and making mistakes. It's very important. You, that's how you learn. Let's see the bad feeling that you get from something that you shouldn't have done or wish you didn't do or wish you did better. Like, especially failing at something where you half-assed it and you just feel like a fucking loser. Like, that just teaches you. It teaches you to get your shit together. And you get through it by just picking yourself back up and moving forward and going.